Welcome back and welcome to section five, building a data cache with DynamoDB and TTL. Welcome to video one, creating a simple user authentication service. So what do we want to build? Well, we want to build a really simple user authentication service that allows us to do a couple of things, create new users, retrieve existing users, and log in existing users. So we're going to store some user information, obviously. So we want to be able to store particularly a user ID and some form of password. So we're not going to use a cryptographically secure way to store that password, but we're not going to store that password uh, in plain text either. And of course, the login API functionality needs to validate our user's password. Uh, and then later on, we're going to issue an authentication token for each user based on that password. And that's a really common pattern for web services and web APIs. You don't normally supply your password with each request, that would be bad. Normally what you do is you log in and you get an authentication token and OAuth is the most common way of doing this. You'll get an OAuth authentication bearer token, which you will pass along with each request. And that bearer token will be a cryptographically secure randomly generated token, which will normally have an expiry as well. And that's where TTL will come into, into play a little bit later. So we'll get cryptographically secure bearer token, although for us it's just going to be something, some randomly generated string. And at some point in the future that will need to be expired. So that's what we're going to use DynamoDB's TTL or time to live feature for to give those authentication tokens a limited time validity. So we're going to need to begin with, to set the groundwork for this, we're going to need three API endpoints. Uh, we're going to need a put endpoint for users. So this will allow us to create new users in the DynamoDB users table. We're going to need a get endpoint to return information about existing users from the DynamoDB users table. Now this is going to return a 404, obviously, if the user ID requested doesn't exist. And then lastly, we're going to have a login endpoint. So eventually this is going to be used to issue an auth token. And we're going to see how we can do that in a couple of videos time. But for now, we're just going to validate the user's password. If an invalid password is supplied, a 403 unauthorized will be returned. And if the user ID doesn't exist, a 404 will be returned. And each endpoint will have its own Lambda function. So following the same theme that we've been following to date, we're going to have a create user function, a get user function, and a login user function. And they will map on exactly to these three API endpoints. And we're obviously going to have an AWS SAM template that defines and creates all of these functions along with the DynamoDB users table. So without further ado, let's jump right into the code. So you can see I've got the code open here in Visual Studio Code. What I want you to do if you're going to be following along uh, in the Git repository, open section five. Under section five, you'll find a part one section. And then inside part one, we've got template.yaml. And template.yaml again is our, obviously our SAM template and that defines the environment that we're going to be working in. We've obviously looked at this plenty of times before, so I'm just going to whip through this particular template and show you what we've created. So obviously we've got our DynamoDB users table keyed on user ID and last login. We've assigned that to read and to write capacity units. We've got our create user function here. Obviously it's Python 3 again. The handler is create user dot lambda handler. We've given it CRUD permissions on the user table. And we're saying that we want it to be triggered by the put to the slash users API. And we've got the get user function. Again, everything's the same, but the API that's going to trigger it is slash users and then the path parameter user ID. That's obviously a get. And then lastly, we've got a post for login. So we're going to post to slash users user ID slash login. Code is very similar to the previous examples. So the create user lambda handler. Obviously we retrieve the request body from uh, the HTTP body. We pull out email address, first name, last name, and password. And then this create user function here, we'll call the DynamoDB create user function. And we're generating the last login time as, as now. And then we create this user doc with the user ID, which is a, a randomly generated UUID hex. Obviously email address, first name, last name from the payload. We're calling this encrypt password function. This is a little bit interesting. So we're using a SHA-256 signature on the password. So that's going to run a SHA-256 one-way hash against the password. Semi-secure, you could say. SHA-256 is pretty secure, but if you really want to do this properly, you should be adding a random salt to your password. 
So we're going to put that in there and then obviously the last login time as well. Just logging that out to the console. And then we're calling the put item DynamoDB API function, which we're all very familiar with now. Get user works in exactly the same way. We're just doing a query, obviously a query because we look up by key. So we're saying find the first entry um, for this user ID, or rather get all entries for this user ID, and we're just going to return the first one because there shouldn't be any examples where we've got the same user ID in there twice. And then the last one, login user, is a little bit interesting. So it's very similar to get user, obviously. So we're doing a user lookup based on user ID. But what we are doing is we're validating passwords. So the methodology for that is very simple. Obviously, get user by ID. And we have the same encrypt password function here. But what we're going to do is we're going to pass the candidate password in. That's the password that gets passed to the API endpoint run the same encryption algorithm over it, the SHA-256 one-way hash, and then compare that result with what's been stored in the database. So what that's achieving is because, because it's a SHA-256, it's a secure one-way hash, there's no way for us to decrypt the password in the database. All we can do is compare it against candidate passwords. So that's how we're achieving that. So as before, what you need to do to deploy this in the correct working directory, you're going to run the SAM package command that uploads a SAM package file to S3, and then we just run this so SAM deploy, uh, reference the template file, stack name I've called TTL demo and capabilities I am to give it permissions to run that. Just hit enter, and I will pause the video while that change set is executed. Okay, so that's all run successfully. We can see successfully created stack. Now, if we flick over to the AWS console, we can go and take a look at what's being created. So if we click on Lambda, we should see we've got get user, login user, and create user function. If we click on DynamoDB and click on tables, we can see we've got our user table here. And of course, as we know, what we actually need to be looking at is API Gateway, so we can get our API Gateway invoke URL. So click on TTL demo, again, click on stages, click on prod, and you're just going to copy this invoke URL here. Now, if I flick all the way over to Postman, just copy that, flick over to Postman, and here's something I created earlier. So a create user example. So stick your URL in here. This is what your body is going to look like. If you click send, you can see you've asked me to create a user with da 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 da. This is our encrypted password, and here's the user ID. So just copy that user ID. If we pop over to get user, you can stick your user ID in here. You can see I've been testing this earlier. Click send, make sure obviously your invoke URL is correct. And you can see this is the user body. Now, if we want to log in, obviously we, we've got the slash users slash user ID slash login path. That's a post. So put your user ID in here. Just going to copy the invoke URL from this example. And here's the body. So the password we supplied was 1234. That's what we set the user with. And we can see now that it returns the body payload for our, our user that we just created. Now, with a bit of luck, if we change this to something else, we add another character to our password and click send. We can see here we get a 403 forbidden. So this is a standard unauthorized response. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video.